Hey, welcome back. It's Jamie Hartley here from Crossfader, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the MIDI mapping function within Recordbox DJ. Now, if you've got the, any Recordbox R series of controllers, so the DDJ RB, DDJ RR, DDJ RX, RZ, RZX, all of these controllers were released before Recordbox 5.0 was released. With Recordbox 5.0, some new performance features were added, but we can't make use of them as it stands on this R series of controllers. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to map out the keyboard mode to a controller like the DDJ RR, so you can start doing tone play in your sets, and also something as simple as the beat loop, auto beat loop mode to the DDJ RB, which it doesn't currently have. These are useful features that a lot of DJs want to make use of, but don't have on their current controller or setup. Let's now have a look at how to change some of these performance features so you can customize your setup in the exact way you want to use it. Before we get started, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff to help us keep making videos just like this. Let us know in the comments as well if there are any other record box tips or tricks that we can help you out with. So straight away when I first got the DDJ RB from Pioneer, the one thing that stood out to me is the loop mode function. We only have the in and the out manual loop adjust buttons and there isn't an auto loop or what's now called beat loop function on this controller. So this is one thing that you might want to think about remapping out. If you don't use one of the pad modes, we could remap the beat loop functions to a pad mode um, that we don't use. For example, in this tutorial, I'm going to get rid of the slicer mode and replace it with the beat loop mode. Now how to do this? First of all, we need to get familiar with the different loop modes. You can access them on the software by clicking here, and these are all the different um, performance modes, sorry, that are within Recordbox DJ. Now if we go into beat loop, which we can't access on the actual controller as it stands, these are all the different beat length auto beat loops that we can choose from. Now this, think about it as a page, and this page has four, eight, 12, 16 different slots on it. Now, this first slot, 1 64th of a beat, is so tight you can't even hear it. It's such a tight loop. Now, I'm not interested in remapping out that particular loop length. Again, 16th, an eighth, a quarter. They're all so tight that I might not be that interested. But from a half, one beat, two beats, four beats, eight beats, 16 beats. 16 beats is a very common length of beat loop. So that's where I want to start my um, beat loop mapping from. It's up to you how you want to do this and if you want to do it on this particular mode, but this is just to show you how the MIDI mapping works within Recordbox DJ. First thing is I need to figure out what does the 16 beat correlate to on this page. Now, which number pad is it? It's as simple as counting along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, 16 beat loop length is pad number 11. That's all we've got to remember. Next, I will go to the MIDI option, which is just up here at the top. This then opens up the MIDI setting device window. Just make sure that you have your connected device selected. I have here the DDJ RB. The next thing is to understand how this window works and what it physically does. This is basically all the stuff that's under the hood of the controller. Every one of these buttons and faders and knobs all map out. So when you apply an action to one of these buttons or pads, it tells the software a code. And that code is this MIDI in and MIDI out. So it tells the software a code and that code then translates to a feature that's built into the software. This window allows us to remap out those different codes to different features. First of all, just get used to the different column headers. So the function is what the actual physical thing is. Loop in, loop out, all the different um, features that Recordbox offers. The next column is the deck. Now this allows you to select which deck you want that feature to be applied to. Next we have the MIDI encode. You don't need to worry too much about that. Next up we have the type and this just allows you to choose whether it's a button or in some instances a knob or a slider. For example, the tempo adjust is a slider, not a pad. So that's what is indicated here in this dropdown. Then we have the MIDI out and lastly, the comment which allows you to just type in. So you've got a bit of a reference to know exactly what that control is so you can easily find it again. To remap out the beat loop, first we need to find the beat loop mode and that will be within the pad tab. When we navigate to the pad tab, I've organized the pads by the function so then I can navigate to the slicer modes and the slicer pads and delete the ones that I don't want. All these slicer pads are already mapped out as default, but we need to delete them to make room for the new beat loop mode. 
First, I'm going to just delete these one by one. Okay, delete. Okay, and you'll notice I'm deleting both for deck one and for deck two because you will need to map out for both sides if you're going to use it on both sides. Now I've deleted all the slicer pads, I also need to find slicer mode. Here, slicer mode for deck one and deck two, and I need to delete that as well because I'm going to remap out the slicer mode button to the beat loop button. Let's delete there and delete again. Now for the remapping. We need to add the beat loop features into the MIDI device window. To do that, we just click the add button at the bottom. And now we can search for all the things that are available to map out within the Rekordbox DJ software that are underneath the pad tab. If I go into a different tab, there will be different things available. Let's go back to the pad mode though and add in beat loop. And first of all, the beat loop mode. We will add this twice and then choose one on deck one and one on deck two. Then it's as simple as pressing learn. And if you're highlighted on the deck two one, I'm going to press the slicer pad over on the right hand side of the controller. Then highlight the deck one version and press slicer mode on the left hand side. This has now mapped out these beat loop modes to these two buttons. So if we just quickly uncheck learn, close the MIDI device box, you'll notice now when I go from hot cue to slicer, it actually jumps on the software to beat loop. And that's exactly what we want. Then remember this 16 beats was pad number 11. So let's start mapping out the rest of the features. Pad mode, add, beat loop, and then we want beat loop pad 11. And I'm going to set 16 beats on this end pad here and then work down to whatever the tightest loop I can get to here. Pad 11, let's go learn, press the pad, make sure you're in the slicer or now beat loop mode before you press the pad, otherwise you'll try and remap out a different modes button. Then add again, beat loop, pad 10 and work along. Now that I've mapped out each of the pads, one last thing you could decide to do is actually label them in the comments section here, double clicking, and then I could set this as 16 beat loop. Eight beat loop. Just remember once you've done that, you'll also need to just add them all in again, the exact same ones, beat loop pad 11, but change it to deck two and add again beat loop pad 10 and repeat the exact same process on the opposite side. If you make any mistakes, it's as simple as pressing the delete button and deleting that MIDI map and then redoing it again. Once you're happy, always double check that it works. So close the MIDI device tab, undo the loop, set it off, just check that the pad mode button works, perfect, and then try out the different loops. There we have 16 beats, eight beats, four beats, two beats, one, half, quarter, and an eighth. Press it again to toggle them on and off. I've now successfully mapped out the beat loop function to the slicer mode instead of using slicer. Then the last thing to do, once you're happy with your remapping of your controller, remember you can do this to multiple different features. You can use the shift mode so you can remap out the slicer loop or pad effects too if you don't use it to the other features you want to use. But once you're happy with your new mapping, then go to MIDI, make sure to export and save that MIDI mapping so you've got it saved. Then you have the option to either use the controller in its default mode, which is here, or using the import and export to import different MIDI mapping setups. So imagine, let's just set up and export this as DJRB beat loop. And we'll just save it to my desktop, that's fine. Now, if I press default, it'll ask me if I want to revert back to the original um, mapping for this controller. I've already saved it, so I don't want to, I'm not bothered about exporting it now, press no. And that then remaps it out and this has become slicer mode again. To then reactivate the MIDI mapping that we've just set up, press import. I'm not bothered about saving the already default map, so I'm gonna press no. And then it's a case of just finding it, double clicking it, and it'll remap the controller out to your new MIDI mapping that you've just saved. 
Another really cool feature that you can find in Rekordbox DJ is the keyboard mode. Now, this was added in Rekordbox 5. This was after the Rekordbox R series of controllers like this, the RR or the RX or RZ, were released. Um, you can find the keyboard mode on the DDJ-1000 on the actual hardware and on the DDJ-XP1. But on something like the DDJ RR, it's not currently mapped out. But we can just replace one of the performance pads with this really exciting mode. It's used a lot for tone play and in your DJ Championship routine style um, performances. But let's now map it out onto the DDJ RR so you can start using it on your controllers. Just bear in mind, you want to map out the keyboard mode to any of the pad modes that uses the parameter buttons, which is actually most of them. For this, I'm going to remap pad effects 2. I'm going to keep pad effects 1, but change pad effects 2 to keyboard mode. To do this, we first need to clear all of pad effects 2's functions, including all eight pads, the pad effects 2 uh, mode button, and the parameter buttons. I'll show you what the parameter buttons are shortly within the MIDI mapping options, just so you know what to delete and what to look for. If I navigate to the MIDI device window, go to pad, and then do it by alphabetical order, I'm going to scroll and quickly delete all of pad effects 2's functions. And then lastly, I need to delete the pad effects beat down and beat up functions. So pad effects beat down for deck 1, delete that. And that is what this parameter button is here, the left parameter button. And then pad effects 2 beat up, where's that? I think I've already deleted that. I've already deleted that one. So now we can remap. We've cleared these two buttons, all eight pads, and the pad effects to pad mode. Let's now add in all of the keyboard modes. I'm only going to add up to keyboard pad eight because we've only got eight pads in front of us. The reason why there's 16 is because on the DDJ XP1, there are 16 pads. But on here, we've just got eight, so I only need to map out the eight. These two are going to change the page up and down the different keyboard pages, so we don't need to worry about all 16. Let's now map out keyboard pad mode and just learn each of the features. Shift and pad effects 2 to learn the keyboard mode, and then keyboard pad 1, keyboard pad 2, let's just stop it there. Keyboard pad 3 is going to keep playing. I also need to do the, um, I need to add in the keyboard page right and keyboard page left, which is going to be these two buttons here. So page left, the left arrow, page right, the right arrow, uncheck learn, go off the MIDI device window. Now let's check it. We should be able to scroll up and down the pages, as you can see here, left and right. It'll go all the way up 12 semitones and down 12 semitones. There's an extra page at the bottom as well to be aware of. But if I now go back onto the original page, zero is the original track. And then it goes up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I can go upper page, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The last thing to note with keyboard mode is you can choose which hot cue you want the keyboard mode to be assigned to. Now it was automatically assigned to A because I already had I'd already been playing around with A. But if I reload this track in, now when I go to keyboard mode, shift, pad effects two, three hot cues flash because I've got three hot cues set up on this track. So the first time I go to this mode, I can choose which hot cue I want to then um, activate for the keyboard mode. So if I choose the second one this time. It's activated that, and you can see that on the screen here. Now, it uses that hot cue to change the pitch up and down semitones. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've gained some insight into how to use the MIDI function in Rekordbox and remap out your controller. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Do all that good stuff, and I'll see you in another Rekordbox tips video very soon.